Hello everyone and welcome to episode 14 of Cross Atlantic Gaming. I'm your host, Risky the Kid, and joining me this week and every other week, my co-hosts, Doc H1X1. Hey, what's up? And Chocolate Bear. Hi guys, hello. Um, all right, first and foremost, want to shout out our newest Patreon patrons um, from this past week, and they are Ladonian and Ryan H. Woo! Thanks. Hell yeah, <laughs> thanks guys. Thank, so thanks thank a lot you. for the support, as always. Um, all right, well, what's been up with you guys, Chocolate? I know you said you spent a lot of time in a church this weekend. Uh, yeah, uh, it was my daughter's christening, so... Uh, we had nice big family gathering. Um, unfortunately, that hit my gaming time hard, but also it increased my drinking time. So, yeah, win some, lose <laughs> some. Okay. Yeah. Fair. If you can only yeah. get those two to line up sometime. Well, yeah. Then well, I'm bad at games as it is. So a couple of drinks and I'm <laughs> would hey, not I've, be good. I, I've seen your technique with uh, drinking uh, uh, in a video recently, and uh, there's. <laughs> You could probably do it a little bit more efficiently, but I, I, I still like the way you're going, though. So Definitely yeah. better ways to get the alcohol into your mouth than trying yes. to pour it from a foot above your head. I mean, well, I, I, just to, I'll finesse that for the, uh, for the next one I do. There you go. Um, well, I was kind of in the same boat this weekend. I, did, I was in a wedding this weekend, so I've had like rehearsal dinners, and it, it was an hour away. So every time I had to go out there for anything, it was like... It was a pain. So I am in the same boat where I didn't get a ton played this week. Hang on, wait. Um, rehearsal dinners. So you had to rehearse how to eat dinner for the big day. Is that a weird, wait, wait. a weird, no, a weird uh, term or a weird it's phrase weird, but for that? Do y'all not have that over there? Rehearsal dinners for weddings? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> I thought that so, was a universal thing. Like, yeah, so we don't. We know how to eat. So, okay, <laughs> no, it's well, not. It's not that. <laughs> so chocolate. All it is is it's running through how the actual wedding is going to go down like as far as where people need to be who's saying what it's like a practice for the actual ceremony yeah. you call it a rehearsal dinner because usually a meal is provided by the bride and groom yeah. um for everybody involved so it, you're not you're not rehearsing how to eat <laughs> but I'll it's confusing this here at this point right <laughs> <laughs> yes no. No, I well personally, I've never been to a rehearsal dinner for uh, for a wedding. So, unless that's kind of next level status, <laughs> no, I, I'm not. I don't think it's just no, it's just normal here. <laughs> chocolate, chocolate over here getting all like hoity toity. Honestly, yeah. like, you guys in your rehearsal fancy dinners, yeah. <laughs> making sure your spoon is there at nine p.m. <laughs> God. Uh, Doc, did you have any weddings or christenings going on this no, weekend? No, no, I, I absolutely <laughs> did not, and I am thankful for that. Uh, no, I just uh, work in video games, pretty much same as usual. Yeah, so uh, good. Did you get anything no. new played or different? Or uh, well, Graveyard Keeper came to Game Pass, which was uh, some pretty cool news. Uh, I think uh, way back when they said it was going to come to preview program, and I guess they just ditched that and it was just like, hey, surprise! If you have Game Pass, you own it. Yeah, and, I remember um, you brought this up a while ago. Yeah, I I played it in early access on Steam for a while, and I really liked it. Uh, I think I described it before as like Stardew Valley, but with a dark sense of humor, and that pretty much describes the game. I mean, aside from a few other you know mechanics and stuff, but pretty much it is the look and feel of Stardew Valley as far as what you're doing daily in terms of having tasks to complete, gathering resources, but it's a much more dark sense of humor in the sense that you are a medieval undertaker in charge of a church and graveyard and everything that you would expect that that entails pretty much <laughs> it was so i i did hop into this and i will say it was it was short-lived for me and i don't know if i will go back but as far as the <laughs> the weird humor goes your introduction to the to the game is you're just like walking across the road and then you get hit by a bus or a car or something and then you're dead <laughs> Yeah, pre present day. Yeah, present day. Pre yeah. In the present day, and then you wake up, and there's like a talking skull, and his only thing, at least the only thing I remember, he was like, <laughs> hey, uh, if you get me some, uh, if you get some meat off this dead guy, you can go sell it at the pub, and then you can get a beer from the pub, and you can bring me the beer back. And I was like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. It's that That talking skull. 
And then, like, a donkey shows up to drop off a body, and he's like, oh, I can't talk to that donkey for whatever reason. I was like, <laughs> Well, no, the, yeah, because the donkey this? is all about, like, communism and how everybody else is a capitalist pig, and it's like his life right. is free, and, like, the game goes places with some stuff. And also, if, like, like you know, nothing against people for or against church, anything like that, but if, uh, like, me and my wife go to church, but, you know, whatever. But, like, uh, as far as, like, anybody that's a little hardcore about that stuff, this game might not be for you either because they definitely <laughs> make fun of religion in this game. Oh, so, superb. I'm going to be yeah. downloading this very shortly. <laughs> well, part of owning the, the the church is that eventually when you get the graveyard up to a certain status of, like, how it looks and appears, which we'll, you know, get into that later, but uh, you can open the church and you are essentially the... I don't, I don't, I don't think they say you're the priest, but you're the uh, cleric, I guess you could say, maybe of the area. It definitely has a Catholic-like vibe to it. Uh, but you can do sermons, and when you do sermons, and if they're supposedly good, you, people donate money to the church. But what's the? They take the angle of like, so you get up to give a sermon, and it's just like, I'm the best uh, preacher around. Yeah, religion's great. This graveyard's perfect, and you just say that, and then you just see people in the crowd go be like, "Oh, good sermon, very good. Yes, I like that sermon today." <laughs> so, what does uh, that what does that translate to in game? How are so you? You get money through that because they donate to the donate. Donation I, I'm talking box. about the actual sermon. Like, how are you giving? Are you is it like multiple oh, choice? Oh, oh, you, it gets it gets better. So you can research <laughs> sermons, uh, and there's all there's all these. Te- so when I played it in early access, they hadn't added a lot of the stuff that's in the game now as far as they had some basic tech trees, but they've added they've done a lot more with tech trees. Like this is Stardew Valley, but way more down the road of like you have tech trees that you un you get different X- XP from different things and you unlock the ability to build stuff or do stuff. And um, you can research like books in the crypts of the church to get better sermons that which would get you more money. You can build stuff like there's building everywhere in this game. You from the stuff you build by your house to grow crops or a furnace or whatever a woodworking bench to inside the church. Like I'm putting more pews in. I'm getting a confessional bu- booth and all these things up the value of your church. It's it's crazy. The game is insane. Like it's a super dark sense of humor, but it's something about it I kind of like, and I'm probably gonna keep playing. I don't know. It's like I said, it's Stardew, but really blown out i guess in a weird way <laughs> i remember i mean this is super weird and i don't even know why i'm bringing it up but i was thinking because he your guy doesn't walk diagonal at all no so it's just it's four way directional yeah that's it yeah and so they didn't want to add that detail in but they add the detail of your footsteps yeah it's kind of weird i don't know if you noticed that so like <laughs> well, wherever you walk it'll show you like the impressions of your feet i don't know if that ends up being a mechanic in the end or something but yeah, I thought it was I, was weird that like you can't walk diagonally. Well, you can. He just like shimmies. Or, like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It, it. I will say this too. Like, is if I mean this game is you know 1.0. It's out on Xbox and it doesn't claim to be a preview game. But like, and it you know don't get me wrong. It's not like glitchy or anything. But you definitely get the idea that this is not finished in terms of like, st- you know, like quality of life stuff and certain features in the game. But you know, I could be wrong about that. Well, but. do you know who? <sighs> I don't think it is Tiny Build the publisher. Are actually, they, I don't even I don't even know actually. Uh, well, so it's weird because I'm pretty sure Tiny Build makes a bunch of cell phone games. So like when I saw that pop up, I was oh. like, oh, that's really familiar. But like, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not I'm not actually sure because. Uh, wait, yeah, I mean I don't I don't know because like I never really investigated all that much. Like I got it on Steam early access for like real cheap on a sale like. I want to say five or ten bucks or something. No, I think even though this is in Game Pass, I think if you bought it, it's twenty dollars. I believe. Okay, so um, he's a tiny builder. Tiny okay. builder. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> builder. Builder. We- spelt weird. Um. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh. Just last thing I'll say about it too, like there's there's more to it in the sense that like I, the reason I like it is because they make mini games out of like monotonous stuff. I say monotonous, but also in a weird kind of, like, grotesque way. Like, so you'll get a body from the talking donkey, which I guess you're the only one that can understand talks. <laughs> uh, you take it in, and, like, the skull gives you a rundown the first time on, like, hey, here's how you generally do the prepara- body preparation thing. Well, you'll go down skill trees and unlock the ability to 
siphon all the blood out of the body or siphon the fat off the body or take out brain, skull, other things. So, like, when you get a body, it's got a certain set of skulls on it, and they're either red or white. The more white skulls you have, the more prestige that body gives to your graveyard. So you want more white skulls, less red skulls. Red skull takes one away, white skull adds one. So when you go down this tech tree, you can bring them into your morgue, and you if you siphon the blood out, it'll get rid of a red skull. Uh, if you take the skull out, it'll add a skull, and it's random whether or not it's white or red. So you can do the like a mini game of like, okay, take the brain out, it's a red skull. Take the blood out, it's now a white skull. Now this body is like five white skulls. Like that's the type of mini games that are in this game in terms of stuff you're doing to up the value of your graveyard or whatever you're doing. It's a, like I said, it's a dark sense of humor, but it's a it's a different type of game. I don't know, <laughs> but it, it's definitely something. Do you yeah, do you yeah. think of a. Uh... Chris Rock when the donkey talks. <laughs> that's what you just said that, and I was like, donkey. Or I guess it might I as well be saying that, but it still. might as well be because it definitely provides comic relief. Because like I, I was playing the other day, and he dropped by again. He's like, oh yeah, you've really built up the the prestige of this church, but on the back of my hard working free labor, you common <laughs> or you capitalist pig. Like, and he just always says stuff like that. I'm like, okay. But uh, yeah, it's uh, that game's something, all right. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll I'll try to hop into it more. It's a I'll say this all the time, but it would be a perfect Switch game. <laughs> it probably it would, would be getting be. played I, a lot more. I I cannot imagine this won't come to Switch eventually. Yeah. Like with how good Stardew Valley did on the Switch, like I this would they'd be crazy not to put that on there. Agreed. Nice cross achievements. Oh, bam. Um, was that it for you, Doc? For the most part. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I've been streaming Bomber Crew, but I've, I've already talked about that. That continues to be a pretty good game. Oh, and, I mean, uh, you can you want to talk about your stream stuff? You finally set up oh, uh, some streaming. Yeah, so uh, with me finally getting into the 21st century of the internet, um, <laughs> I can actually stream now. Uh, and uh, I set out a goal to basically prove that you cannot use a capture card and you can set up a quality stream with overlays, alerts, and everything because... With Lightstream doing what they're doing um, for Xbox and Mixer, you can pretty much do that now. Um, it doesn't work flawlessly, but if you were to, say, go to my stream or somebody that uses Lightstream, I would argue that you would necessarily not be able to tell that they're not using a capture card. No, I couldn't. I, I hopped into your stream earlier when you were setting it up, and yeah. I couldn't. Or so did Chocolate, actually. And yeah, yeah, I was there. It, it looked. Yeah, it's, so I mean. It, it's good. looking very good. Yeah, yeah. There, there's enough free stuff out there from so many multiple sources now that whether you have a capture card or not, you can pretty much do whatever you want to, and it's fairly easy to. And I it's mean, nothing I'll, Nothing is like Lightstream branded either, I didn't think. Like none no, of your well, overlays are... No, and what's weird is like they've even got stock overlay stuff, and they definitely have branded Lightstream overlays, but they don't at all like entice you to use them necessarily. No. So I don't know if... yeah. I was going to say, they've even got game overlays, haven't they? I think they've got yeah. an Overwatch skin, which, I want to think. Yeah, which the crazy part is, like, I'm kind of wanting to make my own theme stuff, but now, like, if you could right now download player.me. Uh, Chocolate, what's the one you're using? Uh, uh, stream Elements. Stream Elements. Um, I'm also currently fooling around with the Stream Labs right now. Stream Labs, like, I went on there, they have over... 300 game overlays that you can use for free and and that themes everything on your thing that theme um so it has never been easier to make your stream look super professional with little to no like work at it you know um but now it all depends on how unique you want to make it like i'm trying to do as much stuff as i can um uh, on my own just with like gimp 2 and stuff like that but uh but yeah like you can right now you could download streamlabs obs pluck a theme and that would probably take 10 minutes and you'd be done um and you can even do that through lightstream too again without a capture card so i'd love lightstream to add kind of the alerts instead of going to another third party yeah i agree i well, think having that fully flushed yeah this is an all-in-one obs alert system even more stock um yeah. pictures it would be unbelievable i think it would be the thing to use not yeah and they you know they keep touting that they're in beta and i will say you guys saw from my stream day how i had to re-add and add a uh, scene because 
it, it is very, it's a little wonky at times. Like, it doesn't always work. With that said, it's completely free, so I don't know how much I can really complain about that. But, um, yeah, it's it's one of those things where, like, if anybody's thinking about getting in streaming and you have the internet to do it, there has never been an easier time to make it look as detailed or as uh, flushed out as you want it to look. Yeah. Definitely look good. Um, if people want to find you on Mixer, what's your uh, tag over there? Just uh, Doc, H1X1. Yep. Okay. Mixer, yeah, dot com slash, yeah. Yep. Awesome. All right. Uh, Chocolate, what did you get to play this week? So I last minute jumped in to uh, finish Hitman for uh, 16 ounces Game Pass Game Club and uh, did the prologue and the Paris mission. The Paris mission absolutely did my head in. Trying to kill Victor (laughs) in a non- committal way was uh, very frustrating so in the end I took him out down the corridor and popped two in his head <laughs> with my silencer and then done a runner. True hitman. Yeah, proper hitman. I hitman him hard. <laughs> and um, Dead Cells. Played a very small amount of Dead Cells. Um, really enjoyed it actually. So from you guys talking about it for last week mm-hmm. Yeah. took the plunge. The last couple of weeks. Yeah, well yeah, to be fair. No, I'm not talking about the IGN stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. Philip. Oh man, go big Phil. Um, yeah, and Dead Cells is a great kind of jump in. How far did you get in that? I think I did the first mission or first level. Okay, so without you, dying, you got to like the first checkpoint where you can actually turn in your turn in cells your t- or whatever your cells, mm-hmm. yeah, and yeah. then choose out of the three. Kind of in the next room, you got three things to choose from, which I can't remember what I did. But yeah, really enjoyed it. Yeah, so that game's hope- great. Yeah, hopefully, well, I say hopefully, my wife's away Tuesday, I think Tuesday to Thursday, so I'll be hitting as many gaming games as I can. So Dead Cells will definitely be one of them, as well as hopefully Sea of Thieves I'll try and jump on this week as well. Oh yeah, we mean you still got to hit that up and try to, this is our last week to get the uh, achieve, or what do they call like the... Uh... Oh, the Skull... Stuff, yeah, isn't it? yeah. I think we got. Week. This is our last week to get that done. Yeah. Yeah, we need to, we need to do that. I'm yeah, desperate need... for some cheap loot. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, that was the shortest Sea of Thieves segment we've ever had. <laughs> yeah. Good work, we'll guys. Brush past it, otherwise Doc is going to go off on one. <laughs> Wait, see if what see if so, Um, Risky, what have you been up to then? Um, the one Apart I, I should I should have just added on to Hitman because you were already there, but um. It was funny because last week I was like, eh, I don't really see the value in like replaying these Hitman levels or like it's just not something I would do. Uh-huh. And then once I finally got in there into that like prologue, I I cleared that whole like hundred percent of that whole board. <laughs> yep, yep. See now you're you're going down the rabbit hole. Uh, yep. Well, yeah, it wasn't that bad in that first mission when you're doing like the fake cruise ship or whatever. Oh or yeah. The yacht. yeah. Yeah. Um. And then you finally hop into Paris, and it's it's a whole new ball game. <laughs> yes, yeah. So much bigger, fact... so much more complicated. Sorry, I was just saying, I love the fact there's leaderboards on there. Oh yeah. Oh totally, I, yeah. Totally. I didn't notice it, and I don't know whether it's still true now. But as of Friday night last week, I wasn't bottom. I'm Yay. not going to say who was. <laughs> I probably will be now, but I wasn't bottom on that Paris mission, so I was very happy. I haven't yeah. beat it yet. <laughs> well, I'm behind. I can give you guys some really uh, easy advice on how to make sure you're not bottom and up your points. Oh, no. I'm Go listening. Okay, so <laughs> one of the mark? easiest ways to, uh, okay, one of the easiest things you can, that that happens that knock a lot of your points are you'll get spotted by cameras because there's cameras everywhere in the levels. So on the basement in the Paris level is the security uh, uh, little control room or like a. Uh, Oh, command yeah. center you can go in there and pull the tapes and erase the tapes of you on them you just shared that with all of our competition well technically you have a little bit of time <laughs> <laughs> uh also uh, real quick to help you out with that level there is a master key in the basement of that level as well um so that get will, to the basement <laughs> yeah uh, also again when you know these levels like the back of your hand there's also rat poison in the basement uh there's <sighs> There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff like that hidden all throughout these levels. That like are little things that like they're always there in each playthrough, so you'll just get to know them real well. But yeah. Well, that was kind of like, kind of like that first mission. It's like one of the ways I had to kill the guy was with rat poisoning. Yeah. So yeah, totally. 
Um, but I didn't find that stuff until I ventured down to the bottom of the ship. And then there's like yep. extra uniforms that you could put on the rat poisoning and just like so much stuff. <laughs> it's totally, so totally. It's uh, there is a lot going on in those levels, but it can make for some really fun, uh, really fun moments. But that's the thing. Chocolate is like, I missed that stuff until I actually looked at the challenges. Like my first playthrough, I didn't really care yes. about any of that. I just, yeah. I choked the guy to death when the guy he's talking to is looking out the window. Oh, okay. Um, I just killed him there, and then that was it. But then it was like, I saw I had to drown him in a toilet, and I just sat there, yep. and <laughs> yep. I just I was following him, and I was like, when is he going to go in a bathroom? And I just kept waiting and waiting. <laughs> um, but you had to give him the rat poisoning because it makes him sick. And yep. then he went into the bathroom, and then uh, I had to drown him. Well, um, I found his, ki- killing his sister was the easiest one, Um but this will make you laugh. As I went upstairs, murdered her, hid her, I couldn't find the stairs to go back down. So I was lost <laughs> on the second level. Well, no, the, fir- the first... I don't even know. I don't even know yeah, what I could not find the stairs to go down. It was driving me mad. I'm pretty, doesn't the minimap have little staircases on it? Like, yes. showing you? It, yeah, it does, but... I'd, uh, listen, it's, it must it's, have been uh, broken. Well, no, some of them you could go... You would go only d- up and down one level... So I think you, she was on the second floor, wasn't she? So you went up to the second floor, killed her, and I didn't take the same route down. So yeah, anyway. Didn't you say it's a stair set? Those don't just go one way. <laughs> no, st- the stair. Ca- so some staircases only went to levels say two and three, and then if you went to another part of the map, you could take the staircase that would go all the way down. So that's how I got lost. Anyway, let's move on. This. But is- some say he's still wandering on that ship to this day. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. but, but no, those yeah, those uh, those targeted uh, scenarios are, are absolutely. You're right, Rishi. That is absolutely what gets you familiar with the levels and puts you in those scenarios where you're just like you start to connect the dots of like, oh, I see what it's wanting me to do now. And now, and not only is that cool, but like, let's say you'll do a scenario, you figure out some little nifty tricks on the level. You'll be doing another scenario, and it'll be like, oh well. I know from that other one that I can get this thing here or make, or he's definitely going to go to this spot when this happens. That's how those levels start playing out the more and more you play them, and it's pretty cool. So I think I just didn't have the patience after after I 100% of that first level. It's like mm-hmm. starting up a second one and then thinking, oh, man, I have to redo this whole thing. I have to figure out everybody's patterns, where they're going to be when. Uh, I think that was kind of daunting, and I had just played it for like two, three hours or whatever. I feel like it took me a long time to get through all of that stuff on that intro mission but um so yeah i don't well, i think maybe it was just me i should have like taken a day off and then hop back into it like if i hop back into it right after this podcast it'll probably be fine again but i don't know i got real flustered in that paris mission <laughs> one thing i'll say since everybody's gonna be playing sapiens a level next one of my favorite uh scenarios in that entire game is on that level one of the guys you have to take out is the owner of the – I forgot his name. but he There's a guy and a girl you have to take out. The girl's a doctor, and the guy's just this philanthropist, like, rich guy back in the vaccine or whatever, This or this virus, whatever it is. I can't remember. He had a – he was a very much troubled child in the sense that he was, like, a guy that his mother always told him what to do, and he had a, definitely a mom complex, mommy complex. And, like – and his mother recently died. Well – you can do a scenario to where you lead him throughout different parts of the level and make things happen in such a subtle, like ghost-like way. You make him think that his mom is <laughs> is is coming back, and then you what? literally end up in the room dressed as his mom in a chair facing a window, oh. like when he. It, it's, it's that's play, horrifying. Play it out. It is amazing because literally you get to a point where you're in this study-like room, and he doesn't know you're in there, and you and you had a slideshow set up to basically show different parts of his childhood with his mom and a record that he always used to play his mom always used to make him play when he was learning like doing lessons or something that he hated like you'll have it play at just that right time and like you're, you just slowly make him go crazy Good like lord <laughs> but play it on that level play that scenario it is worth it it's really cool yeah so that's got a very dexter uh, vibe to it totally it? Hell totally yeah but oh once God. you see like the different like it's so intricate but like it'll once you see it play out it is freaking great like yeah, I do like the fact um, you were saying risky about kind of playing it quite close together. I do like the fact now that we have two weeks to kind of get these two missions out of the way, so you you don't have to burn out to think oh in this seven days I need to bash out these two levels. Yeah, it's um, 
it definitely gives you that kind of break. Like one a week pause. Is, is good. <laughs> yeah, it gives you the pause that you need. Um, yeah, and if, if you guys want more info on that, the whole Game Pass Game Club thing that 16 Ounce does on their podcast, um, join us on Discord. That's uh, that's where all that stuff goes down. All the info about it, what chapters you need to be playing and whatnot. Um, so yeah, Discord, Discord, Discord. And that's in the show notes. So um, join us there if you want to talk Real. more Hitman. Yeah, if you ever just thought about just like, you know, you don't have a lot of people to play with sometimes or just like want a cool group of guys to hang out with, like we are there, we play video games, and that's pretty much all you need to know. So... By the way, we weren't saying we were the cool ones. No, we were not just at all. Saying that there are cool people there. We're the least cool. Maybe. <laughs> I'm not going to name names. I'm, we got to stop calling people out. <laughs> I mean, we're I, look. I've always said we're pioneering a new a new avenue of, of of business growth. You know, basically, we look at who is fortunate enough and nice enough to give us money, and, they, and then we just irrefutably them. call them out and shit on them. So you know, we're pioneering that new. That new, you know, uh, technique as far as business growth, and uh, you know, check back two months from now when we're probably shut down and have no income. So, yeah. talking yeah. of which, that's quite a good segue. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, into what? I wasn't done yet. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, to just shut risky down. It's a, it's a pretty good segue into Madden Mobile because that's what I was about to talk about for a second. <laughs> I was like. No. <laughs> God oh, that's what Madden Overdrive is. Okay. Oh. All right. Well, tell us about Madden Overdrive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Madden Mobile got rebranded. It's Madden Overdrive this year. Um, if, if you're familiar with the mobile game, which I'm not going to try not to talk about this forever, uh, but I play it every year a bunch, and I have a league, and if you ever want to do any of that stuff, just get a hold of me somehow. Um, one big change they made this year is to the actual like PvP content that you're playing against other people online. Um so it's the actual mode is called overdrive and what you're doing is you're playing against another person live and it's a they're three minute games um and it's scored like fantasy football so if you complete a pass you're gonna get seven points if you score a touchdown you're gonna score 60 points something like that and you can see exactly what the other person's doing at the same time so like if they score a touchdown it pops up at the top like touchdown from this person this is how many points they have and you're watching your scores at the top um they they're just they're both going up and you have the three minutes what's up well so it's it's like asynchronous then it's not like like real time player versus player kind of thing no no it is real time sure you are playing against someone oh okay okay i I thought it was literally like an actual madden like you know their teams on defense your teams on offense kind of thing so that's the thing is you don't play any type of defense um okay okay, your defense will be out on the field for them to play so like if you have really good safeties in your backfield or something and they try throwing a stupid pass you're all you are going to have a better chance with like the better players you have in certain positions Um, so your defense is out there you just don't play with them um so the other cool thing that happens as you're gaining these points um there's like a tactic meter and if you score enough points you're going to be able to unlock these tactics and they're things like the other player is not allowed to pass anymore um, oh, wow. for, for like a play. Or um, if you score a running touchdown, your points are cut in half. And like that all is set up with like who your coach is. Each coach is going to have a different game plan with these different tactics. <laughs> it's dude. It, they have it is so gamified this. <laughs> that's like, this is the gamiest Madden like mode I've ever seen in any type of Madden anything. It's like the whole time you're saying this, I'm like, you could easily replace like coaches with general of this army gets this uh, ability. Like, you know, literally that's, that's what we're looking at, <laughs> which here. is cool. I mean, that's, that's neat that they've done that though. I mean, that's, that sounds really, sounds really cool actually. Yeah. It's, I mean, that's really the only thing I wanted to touch on because it's so vastly different from anything they've done with this. And I don't think this is a mode in like, normal madden which i don't play normal madden because i'm terrible at madden (laughs) like this is the only type of madden i can be good at because it's more like some weird tactical war game and not actual madden i love how risky is over here like i only play uh, mobile madden i don't play actual madden i'm not a i'm not a weird person (laughs) i totally realize that i'm the weird person here no no um, hey, that's that sounds cool though. I mean, but yeah, I just think that mode, uh, even if you're not into Madden games or Madden Mobile, 
uh, give it a shot. Everything's free, obviously. They have their pay to win. Like, if you come up against somebody who's put $400 into this game, you're going to lose. <laughs> um, but they try to pair you up with people who um, are closer to your level, and you're obviously. Well, it's because they've got all the uh, they've got all the yellow legendary football helmets. So they, you know they. Yeah, you don't think that's a harder. thing? There are colors here. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is are, rarity colors. Uh, yeah, red is the rarest. All color right. <laughs> I mean, oh wait, what? <laughs> red, not orange or yellow. Wait, what? <laughs> yellow is Why the they one. Have to go mess up a system it. that worked perfectly fine. <laughs> Well, because they it's like a it's a bronze, silver, gold, oh. and then red for whatever for whatever oh, red oh, stands for. Oh, you know, for. platinum red. You know, obviously. Uh, they probably okay. couldn't differentiate platinum and silver, so they're like, yeah, just make it red. That's fine. What's what's uh, Belichick's uh, special power? I, I don't, don't know how to say it. I haven't I haven't <laughs> I unlocked him know. as a coach yet. He's okay, he's probably gotcha. like the level fifty ultimate. He's the le- <laughs> Like, if you don't spend $500, you're going to be going through the next six seasons trying God. to earn him. So. I love that we're talking about Madden in this way. I actually <laughs> might want to play this. <laughs> well, that's that was my thought. I was like, do you really need to talk about Madden Mobile? And I was like, I kind of need to talk about this game mode at least because it's pretty gamey. It's not just like oh, madden in sports. <laughs> um, this is, that's that's great. So I've been playing a decent amount of that. That, that kind of worked into the whole – not being around, not being home a bunch, um, not having my consoles oh, right. with me, so yeah, I, I got yeah. to play a decent amount of that, and it was good. But um, but um, true. But um, but yeah. I mean, if if only you had a console that was mobile that you could. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to be the weird guy like know, hauling know, my I'm switch just... around, like sitting. It's, <laughs> it's not so weird when you're sitting in the corner with your phone out. <laughs> it's weirder if you have a neon blue and. Red joy right. over the you, you can be more conspicuous with your phone. I, I get yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, true. true. Spe- speaking of that, like when sometimes when I'm playing the games that need to sit in horizontal mode, I'll play them vertical mode just so I don't look weird in the corner. <laughs> I've found myself doing that so many times. Like when I'm playing oh that Marvel God. Strike Force game, I'm just reading everything <laughs> sideways and tapping stuff that way. So like, oh, he's just up browsing the internet or Instagram. <laughs> he's doing something like a normal person. I love how you're just like so conscious and so, oh, or like sure. conscientious of like. <laughs> It's like, oh man, I can't look like I'm just playing a stupid mobile game. <laughs> like, nah, man, I'm over here doing important stuff. I'm checking stocks, okay? Like, yeah. Yeah. Don't, you can't don't check stocks in, a, in anything but vertical mode. Don't bother me. Yeah. The amount of games I've had to like quit out of in the middle of like a match because I feel embarrassed. It's like, hey, oh, what are no. you doing? Oh no, I was just checking Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> definitely lost that match. Well, hey, jokes on them because even when you log out of those games, numbers still go up, man. Numbers still go up. It's true. All right. Clickers. Um, so chocolate is away because the baby woke up. We were going to do chocolate call out challenge <laughs> next. Uh, let's just save that for after the news then. <laughs> so All right. let's get into the news. So much like before E3, uh, if people don't know, Gamescom is going on right now in Germany, and tomorrow is—I think today is like—I could be wrong about this, but I think today is when like it's like open to the—I think it's always open to the public, but I think today is when everybody's getting in, playing games, and they've not really made any announcements yet. That's like today's the day where I feel like I'm getting—I'm seeing a lot of game trailers and that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, like, and then theoretically tomorrow is when Xbox. Uh, does their show and we'll you know probably get a lot of news out of that but the point of me saying that is because we're right before all a lot of this news is about to drop so there's going to be some things we're probably going to be um not get brought up today because you know we're just a day early right now so uh, of course right of course that's yeah, how this yeah, would work. It's how it, it works be a out. Sunday yeah, I mean, conference or something yeah exactly yeah um <laughs> But uh, we we got some other stuff to cover here, Um, and uh, first thing we want to talk about, just a public service announcement, Um, Game Pass games leaving August 31st, so we've, you know, been recently talking about ones added this month, including like Graveyard Digger, um, things like that. Uh, We do have about uh, seven games leaving this month, and from the looks of it to me, it doesn't seem like any of them are anything I would actually sweat that much about, or ones that I would personally care about. Um, So... The, just to go through the list here, we've got Pez 2018, uh, Pro Evolution Soccer, uh, Ten Second Ninja X, The Bridge, Galaga Legions DX, Soul Calibur 2 HD, Tekken Tag Tournament 2, and Pac-Man Museum. 
uh, majority of those being 360 back compat games. The only um, thing I looked at when I just saw those was like maybe I'll look at Pac Man Museum one more time before <laughs> before right. it's gone because I don't yeah. think I really have Pac Man in any other yeah like and, form on my Xbox. So yeah, and I guess it's one of those things like if you're a fan of like fighting games, like it probably sucks that the So Calibur Two and Tekken Tag Tournament Two is leaving, but also or Pez 2018 that seems yeah was that that's, brief that's, or has that been here since pretty close to launch. I'm going to say that's been around for a while now. It might have been here since launch, yeah. Um, but uh, I will say, though, just as a reminder to anybody that does have Game Pass, if you are interested in those games, you can get them while they're in Game Pass with a 20% discount. Um, oh, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, that works on the base game. No DLC, but it does work on the base game. Um, huh, there you go. So, Yeah, and we're actually – I haven't got this on the news, but I'll bring it up here in a second, but that actually – works into why there's been a supposed leak of another game coming to game pass because there's already a discount in the store on a game and people are thinking that that's because of that um but yeah so base game 20 percent off if you're interested in any of these now is probably the time i think uh aug- yeah so august 31st is when they'll actually officially leave all right good deal. um yeah well doc do you hear that wait warning incoming missile all right so chocolate's not here so i'm going to try to take the reins on Name the phrase for the week. If you don't know what this is, um, we give you guys a four-word phrase over four episodes. Um, if you collect that phrase and email it to cagpodcast at gmail.com, you'll be entered um, for a chance to win a free month of Game Pass. Yeah. yeah. So um, this week's word and the last word in the phrase, actually, is going to be joy. Like joy to the world but that's not the phrase because this is the last word in the phrase and not the first so maybe yeah. that'll help you to figure out how this game works yeah. um yeah so if you're just tuning in this is your first time um you'd have to go back listen to the last three episodes figure out where the name of the phrase is in the episode um and send that in to us but yeah cool. um we'll announce awesome. the winner to that uh next week's show so make sure you tune in for that all right, back to the news. Battlefield Five, Battlefield Five open beta <laughs> begins September fifth. Um, we also got a trailer for this as well. Did you watch that trailer? Yes, we did. Yes, I did. Risky, probably about a thousand times. <laughs> You're. Oh, I am my so into Battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest Battlefield nerd I know. I, it's it's weird because like I I play Battlefield ever since like probably Modern Warfare two. I've I've just been big on battlefield and you know i kind of got out of battlefield one for a little while there but then i've really got back in it hard leading up to battlefield five now and uh yeah i am this trailer was awesome i I loved it i know you're excited for all the battlefieldy stuff but yes the very end of this they finally showed a little tease of what the battle royale mode is going to kind of kind of going to look like um holy shit (laughs) (laughs) was it the very end of the trailer it, it was yes uh yeah it transitioned in the very end they had a big spanning overview shot of what appeared to be a ginormous map it's uh, gonna be huge which not only that it should be noted that it looks like it's gonna take place in norway where uh, the map narvik is uh, around that area because it looked like a snow map and i think that's a big deal in the sense that like i don't think we've had a snow map on a br game yet have we mm, um there's some, i think there's some snow in uh that new paladins one oh. realm royale you're right. Never mind. There is. There is. Well, that that uh, yeah. doesn't count. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cartoony game. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think there's a couple things to note here, and I kind of want to see what you think about this. Uh, one being, did you see what that circle was going to be risky? Did you see what the what the what incentive the... to be inside the circle would be? <laughs> Dude, everything's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that looked insane. <laughs> like. And it seems like such an obvious thing that somebody hadn't tried that yet, but it's like, that looks badass. Like, well, because my first thought when I heard this was like, oh, like mustard, was Mustard Gas World War Two, Or was that World well, War Well, I? I mean, it was World War One, but they the Germans at one point definitely used it a little bit. So too, I was though, just thinking yeah. some type of like toxic gas, like, okay, every right. other Battle Royale mode is pretty much doing the same thing, whether it's a storm or some toxic smog. Actually, I didn't think about that, but that would fit right in because that's exactly what uh, H1Z1 or yeah. uh, did was a toxic gas. So that would actually fit in. Yeah, exactly. But no, that. this is a giant <laughs> burning forest fire rushing towards hey. your face. 
follow-up question, Risky. Do you think we'll have any uh, blue laggers coming in behind the circle <laughs> with this right, one? dude, I don't... I am assuming not, right? <laughs> so, well, because what they show, like, the very last part of that clip, you sh- you see, like, an armored personnel carrier come screaming into the circle, like, from yeah. the fire, and it's on yeah. fire. So I don't know if you're going to take... I mean, I'm assuming if you start in there, you can get out, or maybe, yeah, maybe vehicles only. If you get hit by it in. when you're by yourself, yeah. um, if you're not in a vehicle, you're done. But like, if you're in a tank or something armored, maybe you have a shot at getting in there. But like a small amount of time, I don't think you're gonna see the PUBG like, hey, I've got four bandages, fifteen med kits. Right, like, right. Yeah, I could no, literally I, I... take the next twenty minutes to get into the actual circle. I don't, I don't think that you're gonna do that i don't think you're gonna find a force field from the fire or something weird immediately when i saw that that's what it was i'm like this right away i can tell you is going to make this game way more tense in the late circle absolutely because there's no two ways about it and like you said unless you're in a vehicle i'm assuming you have to be in that circle or you are dead i I would assume i'm also just thinking like how awesome is that backdrop gonna be right yes fire at everywhere (laughs) especially think about like it's down to like the last five and you're in a small circle that has to look insane at that point you know i also wonder like you're already tense like being like okay i know a guy's over there oh by the way raging forest fire right behind me everything's fine it'll be fine (laughs) that's the i don't really know how to phrase it but you know how like if something's super hot your vision like is kind of skewed wherever it is oh yeah Uh, like totally what do you call that what, like you know what I'm talking about though. No, like I do. How, or, it's you're all even wavy. talking about like like when you're looking like a like a flat desert uh, yes. s- uh, landscape and you kind of see the wavy heat rising. Like yeah, yeah. Like so I wonder if you're gonna see weird effects like that if you're like Maybe. too close to it or something. It's like so you'll be able to tell that like you're pretty close to being on fire or like you're real close to yeah. the outside of the circle or something. Yeah. Um, it, I, that that has me way i mean we haven't seen a ton for the call of duty one yet but like right, right. just that brief <laughs> little snippet has me thinking like this could easily be like the best battle royale mode well ever I, I agree with you for and i should say before i even make my points here is that i wasn't at all into the idea of a battle br mode i was just excited about battlefield 5 this has me excited to play that br mode that did at little teaser like that because i'm just like okay and and you know, Risky Men, you talked about this before the pod, was like, I don't think anybody out there wasn't looking at Battlefield and thinking that even when PUBG was getting big and Fortnite got big, everybody was looking like, okay, what game is out there right now that this would be the easiest fit for? It, it was, and I think it everybody was, thought that was Battlefield. Yeah, Battlefield and then Wildlands yeah. was always the other one for me. Or, actually, I agree. I didn't even think about that. Wildlands actually seems like that'd be perfect too. But but because you think Battlefield, what is Battlefield? Big maps, 64 players. They've already got a high player count. Vehicles. And, you know, if we're doing a one-to-one comparison of, like, PUBG and Battlefield, well, what's the difference? Well, PUBG is a, a realistic military shooter like Battlefield, but Battlefield is actually well-polished for a the most part. A gameplay that isn't <laughs> Yeah, shit. exactly. And what's people's been their biggest issue with PUBG? It's not polished, you know. it's It's got issues. Like, so theoretically, this would scratch the itch for people that are like, well, I've never been into Fortnite because it's still a little too cartoony. I don't like the building, and it's not quite realistic military enough for me. And I like PUBG, but man, it's still got some jank. You know, I feel like Battlefield could fill that void right there. The only so, what are the chances that we get a third person view for this at all, even as an option? Like, I you don't have that than, normally, right? In no, any I would mode? say other than spectating, zero percent. Because the only third person you get in Battlefield games is when you're in a vehicle. Okay, and that's it. So that that's the one thing I think maybe it will be kind of weird for a lot of people coming out of PUBG. Yeah. Like, granted, you can play in first-person mode, but I've put hundred, eh, at least a couple hundred hours into PUBG, and I've played maybe, like, three first-person matches. So yeah, that'll be the yeah. weird thing for me. But Yeah. It, yeah, I, I agree. I You know, it'll... I This just has me so excited to see more about that because, again, I, I'm... And I'm still mostly excited for just BF5 because I love Battlefield. I love what that game's going to be, but, like... I saw that and I'm like, okay, yeah, wall of fire, hell yeah, let's do this. <laughs> Sold. Like, yeah, and 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 not to be the negative Nancy of like, because if you go on the battlefield subreddit right now, you can be like, tons of people even before this trailer got released was like, oh, battlefield touted all these new changes, and if you look at all these new changes, you're like, well, that's all in service of a BR mode, which I don't disagree, but like, think about it, like, 
you bleed out now in Battlefield. That's never been a Battlefield game, and it's awfully convenient that they put it in the game where they're going to have a BR mode where every BR mode out there has a bleed out option, you know, to where people can still come up and revive you, you know, teammates. Right. Um, not only that, but, uh, you know, they've they've kind of got the perfect scenario of, like, the grand operations mode as you parachuting out of a, a, a plane. They've kind of already got those animations and stuff done. Like, there's a lot of... Uh, oh, that's... And, you know... Hold on, quick. Just with the animation of getting out of the plane and whatnot. Uh, also in that trailer, it showed a dude jumping off the top of, like, a silo or a yeah. type of tower. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if you're going to have a redeployable chute. Otherwise, that guy was clearly 100%. just jumping down to his death. But in Battlefield games, yeah. like Battlefield yeah. 4, you could jump off a skyscraper and yeah. redeploy it a couple times on your way down. Yeah. So 100% that's going to be in there because that's been a Battlefield thing forever. So I think that just fits. Okay. Because otherwise, they're yeah. just showing a guy committing suicide <laughs> in their <laughs> well, trailer. Well, it's like, yeah, Jack Frax is even like, you see a guy say, like, YOLO here, just going for it. Like, uh,. But, like, not only that, but now, you know, in, like, B- Battlefield Five now, you don't have to be a medic to come up and revive somebody. Well, that's awfully convenient that they put that in the game to where B- BR, if you're playing with teammates, you know, in, Everybody like, needs PUBG, to be able to heal everybody. Every- everybody needs to be able to be able to be revived. Yep, exactly. So, you know, which I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that adds a lot to the normal game anyways, and I think it just is something that they married in a good way in terms of the team no, modes. Yeah, I agree. But, but, man, I'm pumped after that. And uh, I would think it, it won't be, like, classes, though, right? Like everybody will. Have I wouldn't to... assume. I would assume not. Yeah, I would assume It'll... not. I, I don't think. Yeah. Well, does Clash Royale? Is that the one that does classes? Um. Yeah. Yep. So, th- so they're the only ones so far that has done that, right? Or not Clash? It's not Clash. Or not Realm Clash Royale. Royale. What am I saying? <laughs> Realm Royale. Good God. I was playing that. Uh, me and Risky was uh, messing around with the Clash uh, Royale uh, achievement sound on a uh, Streamlabs earlier today, and that's got me thinking of that. <laughs> so. Makes sense. Um, but yeah. yeah, there is in Realm Royale there is classes, um, yeah. and they each have different bonuses. I think I, I'm yeah, not a I huge fan right. of it. I I hope they don't do it, but I also Me don't too. think I'd be mad if they did. The only thing I, like it could kind of be cool if you were playing squads and you actually I actually had yeah true one, like yeah. a sniper. But then it's like you don't really have a sniper because it's going to be well, randomly finding loot throughout the map. At least, I mean, I have no idea if that's actually how they're going to do it, but yeah. I would assume that's how they're going to do it. So, Well, not only that, you would almost be like, why wouldn't everybody just be a medic? So everybody's just got instant revives, too, if that even worked that way. you know. Also, like, you need... why wouldn't everybody just drive a tr- tank? So I'd love to know how see, people are getting their hands on tanks in this yes, mode. Yes, I agree. Because, see, that was, me, that was our point with Call of Duty, because the whole time we're like, well, why wouldn't everybody just drop where they know the tanks are? That seems like the easiest game-breaking thing, but... I would be surprised if they do not have a limited ammunition, limited gasoline uh, aspect to the vehicles. Or, like, if you just want to drive around an APC and it doesn't have guns or something, you can find those well, everywhere, or, like, a Jeep or something like that. And maybe tanks are, like, rare, because they did show a Tiger tank coming in that circle at the end. Yeah. <laughs> that was the other thing. Like, that was straight up a Tiger tank. Well, so like, I'm wondering, the equivalent of, of that, potentially, in, like, PUBG would be if a care package drops and you find, like, an AWM or something, like, you're going to oh. murder people. So, like, it's a clear advantage, but also everybody saying. can see that. So I wonder if there'll be, like, a, a beacon or, like, some sound going off or something just alerting everybody to the location of a potential tank. Like, well, hey, there's one at this went, factory, so. What if they just went total crazy town and just did a la uh, Fast and Furious and dropped a tank out of a plane? Out of a cargo plane? <laughs> yeah, out of a cargo plane, yeah. <laughs> like, I kind of I kind of saw a tiger like tank floating down to the ground. You just look around and see everybody in, like, a 50-yard <laughs> diameter just looking up at the sky at this tiger <laughs> tank just floating down, everybody's mouth uh, watering. I kind of want that now. <laughs> so awesome. Welcome back, Chocolate. Hey, chocolate. Sorry, guys. No, you're good, no, bud. You're yeah. good. You're good, man. You didn't miss much. No, that's fine. You, I literally, I don't think you missed <laughs> much at all besides some Battlefield talk and what was missing or what's leaving in Game Pass. So, um, oh, okay. We're going to move Chocolate's Call Out Challenge to the end of the news, though. Just a heads up. Yeah. Okay. Which, you. I, you're kind of into Battlefield like I am, Chocolate. What did you think of the uh, Rotterdam trailer and the end of it as well? I'm yet to see it. <laughs> All right. <What? laughs> I'm moving on. <laughs> I, I've been bus- this week. Well, no, this I weekend know. has been absolutely dreadful with uh, with my mum and sister and everyone staying up. It's been it has been tough. There has been no time to do 
anything decent apart from drinking and crying. So yeah, that's that's an <laughs> Those it. don't pair well together. together. <laughs> yeah, well, don't take your downers when you're already crying. <laughs> yeah, come yeah. on, man. <laughs> take your uppers, then your downers, and then take some more. Exactly. No, it, yeah, it's uh, it's been a it's been a very very busy busy weekend. So I will be te- checking that out tomorrow. Definitely, definitely do check it out. Um, to, just to take it back to the trailer itself, though, I thought that looked awesome in terms of just normal Battlefield gameplay. I thought that looked freaking awesome. Yeah, man, like, I can't wait. I'm like, glad that you guys are all super into it because I'm hoping that pulls me in a little more. I've never been like, yeah, I like Battlefield, but I've never been super, super into Battlefield. Like, I think I'm a 25 or something, maybe close to a 30 in Battlefield 1. So it's like I haven't yeah. played a ton, but um, it's a lot of platoons growing very uh, yeah, yeah. nicely oh, all you of a sudden. Shout, so... You want to shout that out, Doc? Dow, Actually, Dow. yeah, that's a great idea. Shout um, out, Dow. <laughs> Shout out. Uh, we have a platoon on Battlefield 1 now, which it, we're just going to carry that over to uh, Battlefield 5. That might not be, the platoon system itself might not be live day one, but DICE has come out and said that if you're already in one Battlefield 1, that will stick together as far as when it gets implemented for 5. So um, if you guys are interested in having a group to play with on Battlefield, uh, basically just uh, search platoons and search 16 outs, one word, 160Z. Uh, or if you're friends with any of us, if you go to the platoon system and go to friends platoons, it should pop up right there, and you don't have to ask to join; you can just join, and and uh, you'll be set up for Battlefield Five, like you said, right yeah, up, right off the yeah. bat. So and you'll have the 16 ounce patch right there on your arm when you're in battle. So there you go, uh, and, and on the gun, and on the gun. Actually, not so only good. that, yeah, I was gonna ask you guys: Have you seen how that looks on some of the guns? That's pretty badass, isn't it? it? Was, like I I recently just joined the platoon, and it was on like the metal part of my sweeper, yeah. I think, and I was like. Man, that looks real. Like, I'm so glad they didn't do something stupid, like try to add color or just make it look like a sticker. It's yeah, actually like, right. it's just the outline of it. And it's like, <coughs> Call of Duty. <coughs> exactly. <What? laughs> uh, and it just looks like it's engraved into the side of the gun. It looks so good. So, not only that, but like, I was using the Guevara 98 and it was like engraved into the wood on the handle. That's awesome. And it just looks so cool. Yeah. But not only that, they've actually just recently added more. Now, I've not tested this out, but on the platoon screen, um, for, uh, talking about it, they talked about how they were adding. Or I don't know if it's added yet, but they're looking the ability to add. If you have the majority of people capturing a flag that is in your platoon, the flag will still show whatever nation you're playing on. But in the, the like a fourth of the flag will be your platoon sy- symbol on the flag. Uh, sh- I want to say I saw that when we uh, is that when we li- were that might be live. Beef yeah, that on, might be live um, on the mission last week. I'm sure yeah. of it. But. Uh, it's just so cool, and I'll I'll say this again: like it's so weird because Battlefield One does a, such a good job at looking like an actual, you know, World War One game that like me and uh, Chocolate was playing on Passchendaele, and I just remember my soldier died in the mud, and you just saw this German sh- soldier that if you would have been black and white, it would have looked like it was from that time period. But on his shoulder was this sixteen ounce with like an overflowing beer mug <laughs> on his shoulder, and I'm just like something's not right about this, but I love it. Like, oh, that's great. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't uh, wait. And not to talk too long, but this last thing I want to talk about is how I'm pumped from a history aspect of how they're going in order with grand operations of stuff that happened in the war. Like, they've already done uh, Narvik, which is about a British raid in Norway that happened early in, like, 1940. And then I think 1940 is when the Germans bombed Rotterdam and Holland later surrendered or whatever. So, like, they're going in order of how they're doing all this stuff, and I kind of like that from a from a history nerd perspective, so... You're just a, a nerd of many facets. You have, you have many <laughs> facets as a nerd. Yeah, I don't want to talk about the the conversation me and Moose had about uh, Egypt and Greece and uh, Discord. Oh, no, I saw you that. serve him up. On a, on a <laughs> no, I wasn't even trying to serve him, but I was just like, man, I sound like a moron talking about Actually, this right now as Moose, far as like... Ptolemy and the the Greeks and the... I can't even, I can't even like joke about it and try to make fun of you because I don't know enough... <laughs> proper nouns from the time period just watch the movie alexander and with uh with uh, colin farrell you'll be all up to date I've, on history i've watched history. that and i couldn't tell you what's happening <laughs> <laughs> never mind you are our anyways oh. yeah um moving on <laughs> um all right well we can stay on the topic of battle royales we got a uh, beta release date for the Blackout mode for Black Ops 4. Um, it's going to be coming to PlayStation 4 on September 10th. So that's their their riff on Battle Royale. Cool, um, cool. I, I'd assume you're going to get the Xbox PC one a week later if it's anything like this first beta we just had. Um, so right. maybe September 17th if you're on Xbox would be my guess. 
I'm still interested to see what that is too. I mean, I you know, like my hype is up for Battlefield now, but I'm still super interested to see what that is also. I just it was before we hopped on this, but I was like after seeing that little snippet of Battlefield 5's Battle Royale, uh <laughs> I don't blackouts really gonna have to do something for me otherwise I don't know why I'm in for Black Ops 4. <laughs> so I think after I play this beta that'll be the that'll be the last straw with whether or not I'm pre-ordering Call of Duty. I just so. I just thought of how cool it is that we'll have a platoon for Battlefield 5 cuz we'll already have enough people ready to like squad up a squad 4 on B- BR2. I can't wait for that. I just thought that'd about be that. That'd great. Uh but hey, you know, I I'm picturing it right now YouTube channel they show out blackout mode. First comment, no flaming ring, lame, downvote. <laughs> like, the most downvoted video in YouTube history. <laughs> oh, God, right, yeah. No, hashtag no, no fire. <laughs> hashtag above the call. Like Exactly. So Yeah. I think they've got everything to prove, though. So And I think, I think that they'll blow us away with whatever they show also. I think this is going to be a pretty cool competition. Because if them. anything, the gunplay is going to be good. <laughs> it'll very, it'll yeah, be very good tight. with this blackout beta. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, um, I agree. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, all right. Chocolate, you want to take the next one? Uh, Warhammer Vermintide 2, Shadow of... Oh, why'd you give me the word? <laughs> I'm in no way going to pronounce whatsoever. You're the closest one. You're, you're in Europe. You should know how to say all these weird words. Yeah, that sounds like a well, German American. word almost. We're ignorant yeah. and can't see, pronounce Bogenhofen. Well, yeah, see, I was going to go with bogey. I just, but, I just watched but, Dunkirk. I know that you're very. I know you guys are very familiar with Germans and very friendly. So I just, you know, you should know this. Like, well, anyway, so Risky said it. DLC August the twenty eighth. So DLC coming out on the twenty eighth of August. Are you guys? Will you be, be jumping into the DLC? Will you be getting it, or are you? I, I with Warhammer is kind of just taking the main game and that's it. I still haven't played Vermintide too, so. <laughs> So uh, I'm probably out on that. My only question is, is this included in Game Pass, or is this something you're going to... I would assume not. Okay, so this will be yeah, something yeah. you tack on yeah. to it. And I think this is the main goal of Game Pass, for why developers are getting Game Pass, is for this very reason. Yeah. Like, well, I was going to say, I think the model is, there's the main game, Yeah. Um, out comes the DLC, you get, is it 20% or 10% off? You, As far as I know, you actually don't on DLC, I think it's just base game. If you want oh, is it just ba- okay, yeah. I so... could be wrong though, but I think it's just the base game. Yeah. So here's another question: What happens when Vermintide Two goes out of Game Pass? Do you own DLC for a game you don't own? Then theoretically, yes. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Theoretically, yes. I mean, the they, that's the idea of Game Pass, right? Is that you get this game out to the masses, you you get a few people that might like it that might not have played it otherwise, and then you get those people to buy the DLC. I think that's the. Although, with that said, you're absolutely right as being a concern, but as we saw with the games going out this month, there's a lot of games that stay in a long time, and I, I would argue if you're still playing it for that long, you probably should just go ahead and buy it at that point. Yeah, well, I was looking, Pez coming out, and now Pez um, Pro Evolution Soccer, that was only in Game Pass for, I, w- I only want to say three months. No. I could be we wrong. Were just, it was actually not long at all. Yeah, we were just no, talking about that earlier. We had no idea how long it was actually in there because we thought it was weird that it was leaving already. It, yeah, it, it was only a very short time. I mean, at most, maybe six months, but it was pretty short. It was, it was a short-lived game, but as with any football game, or soccer for you two, um, <laughs> once the season's over and you're on the brand new season, kind of the, the air quotes, then current game is oh, right. it's dead and buried. You're kind of you're losing. Which... I think we talked about this before I was asking you, Chocolate. Didn't we also think that there's a good chance that there might not be another Pez game because of how they lost the rights to the uh, Champions uh, League? Champions yeah, League, yeah. Do you know what? I, I haven't looked any further. Because I haven't hit, touched Pez in so long, um, I've got a feeling it is coming out. As I'm sure I saw something, but I haven't been too in-depth to keeping an eye. I've just been kind of listening out to what FIFA's doing and... Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there is going to be another Pez. Probably one. Okay. Chocolate, is it called um, Pef over there? Pez. Not not Pez. Pef? Not Pev. Why, I, just why? Keep thinking of, I just keep thinking of a Pez Pro, dispenser. And I want, Pro I, Evolution I want Football? Pef? Pro, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. It took me a second, too. Bear in mind, Kwame. Uh, Kwame? Kwa- Ko- Konami. <laughs> yeah, listen. It's close to midnight. I've had no sleep this weekend. <laughs> 
and you guys ripping me is not helping. No, I, I love this chocolate. I love this chocolate. I love it. It's, it's great. Um, so, yeah. I, I, it will be a sad day for FIFA if if they do tie up Pez because, I mean, who's going to be their main competition? Yeah, you could argue that's Madden's problem at this point because they have no competition. They just kind of... Well, you can do what you want, can't you? Yeah. And especially, I suppose, I suppose it's the same with the baseball games as such, isn't it? it? If you haven't got that competition and you buy all the rights for all the teams, you... Well, not only that, but I think the way baseball game is PS4, the show, right? I think that's even... Oh, no, we've, actual... we've got terrible RBI baseball. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, I played yeah. that not yeah. so long ago. That is uh, dreadful. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the... Like, I... F- I could be wrong, but doesn't that also have the actual players? Yeah, like if you go to their, I it does, if you yeah. go to their site, like that's Lindor. Like he's a baseball player. Yeah. I think they found some sort of workaround with that versus the deal that uh, Sony had with the MLB or something. So maybe. I wonder why they don't try to make a less shit game. <laughs> like <laughs> well, the show I'm is so about... good compared to that. Yeah, what I'm. What I'm confused about is, like, I wonder what kind of deal they have to where you can't even have another realistic game on a, on a different system at that point. Like, what kind of deal is that? Like, I, I'm still confused at how that works. Because, see, part of me is like, well, is it just not successful? And that's why nobody bothers. But, like, it has to be successful because I see it on the charts for, like, MPD charts all the time. So, as far Are you talking about the success of the show? The show, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's... Because I wasn't sure who published it, but this kind of makes a lot more sense. Like, Sony is the publisher. Like, oh, it's Sony Interactive Entertainment. So, you're not going to be able to put the show on Xbox or whatever, but somebody must have the manpower yeah. to make a decent <laughs> baseball See, game. That's what I'm saying, because I knew Sony owned the show, but then I'm like, well, why don't we have, like, uh, just uh, on every console, like, MLB... Like like MLB Two like, K used to be it used some, to be a Two yeah, K series. Yeah. And I think the yeah. last one was in like thirteen or fourteen. Instead, we're in this weird area of like you have the show and then you have no other realistic baseball game. It's all these cartoony takes on right. And even so, if like the simu- what's the one that was just on uh, Games of Gold not too long ago, Super Ultimate Baseball Two or something weird like that. Yeah, something yeah, like that. That's yeah. the one I played, not the uh, the other one. Okay, but as far as yeah. like baseball simulation goes, like that game is is really really good if that's what you're looking for but it's like yeah the cartooniness yeah. and just not having actual players they obviously don't have the mlb license um that pulls me out of that game so fast but it's like yeah. if you have the the foundation there and like they just need all those other little pieces and nobody's doing all of that right on anything but playstation right now I just have to assume that they've got some sort of deal set up. It has to be, because if that's even moderately successful, I can't imagine like EA wouldn't have wanted to take a stab at it. But I was going to say, I'm surprised EA hasn't tied up every sports franchise. Right. And have... Yeah, I mean... I mean, that's what they do, don't they? Honestly, they? though, at the EA, at their like, board meetings, people every year could probably be like, hey, baseball game this year? And they're like, no, I don't think there's enough interest. Um, which could get, which yeah, could definitely be true. Baseball isn't the most yeah. popular sport in the world, so. Well, and, it, and it's only well, it's weird because like you're right. I mean, football is definitely more popular, and I was gonna say well, baseball is only an American sport, but so I is mean, Madden, Madden is right, too. So. But but I guess football is just that much more popular at, at this point. Yeah. So. yeah, but they're still knocking out golf games. I mean. Yeah, you're right, I guess. Yeah, what? I don't know. What is, what I mean, is happening? Golf... <laughs> well, not only that, but, like, multiple companies making golf games. You know, the you have golf the golf club, club too, yeah. which is awesome. I mean, like, that game turned out great. And I think EA's maybe taking a step back because I think the last – I think that McElroy one was pretty bad. Well, um, it all went downhill when uh, Tiger Woods started doing some, <laughs> yeah. some strange. Doing some strange. Uh, yeah. That's a good way to put that. Yeah, so that's exactly what it's called, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll leave it Are they that. still doing yeah. – <laughs> Because EA was also um, the MMA, what, what is it, UFC? Oh, UFC. yeah, th- I think they're doing is that Is that too, still a still, thing? Yeah. yeah. So like, yeah. I, I think so, yeah. Even, yeah. So they think UFC is more popular than baseball as well? See, I find that's, that tough that's to why, believe. That's why I think Sony has to have some sort of deal set up. They have to, because I, I, I can't imagine EA wouldn't want another 
revenue of money that they could monetize every year that, and just get a team in place making it every you year. You that. Well, that'd be all the time, wouldn't it? Money would be exactly. pumping in Like, just, just throw Ultimate Team into EA's <laughs> yeah, MLB. There you go, yes. Like, well, hey, guess not? what? <laughs> what? What was, the, what was the, the, the original, the OG loot box card packs, baseball cards from this <laughs> way back in the day? Looking yeah. for those rookie like, cards. Literally, that's what invented card packs. Like <laughs> That is kind of crazy. And yeah, I don't There's gotta be a deal set up. There has to but, be. But what I, kind of deal that would allow you to make things like RBI baseball where I, you have the rights to all the players' names and teams? I don't know. Because I, I, I don't I don't have a good answer why EA they're clearly fine with like everybody acts like their hockey games are shit. So they're clearly fine with pumping out a crap game every year. <laughs> so even if they didn't want to make a good one, why wouldn't they just pump one out anyways and stick a card pack thing on it and rake in the money? Because I'm mm-hmm. sure enough people out there would buy remind it. me next episode and I will have an answer to why we don't have a good baseball. Yeah, game. we need to research this. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna totally. I'm gonna look it up, see if it's weird <laughs> right stuff. <laughs> what did you just say? You cut out for a sec. <laughs> Laziness. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fair enough. Uh, All right, uh, what is up next? I moved the stupid news, Doc. Um, all right, Diablo 3 Diablo. coming to the Switch yep. this fall, um, finally. Wasn't this rumored like a week ago, and then it finally, mm-hmm. Blizzard finally like announced for- it? Yeah, Forbes uh, broke the embargo, and this was like, hey, guys, guess what? <laughs> Diablo out. Hour later, took it down. Uh, that might be, yeah, everybody's like, hey, I think Diablo's coming to the Switch. <laughs> Yeah, well, how do you? That's how that broke. How do you feel about that? I've never got into Diablo. I feel like we've talked about this, maybe when it leaked. That's <laughs> when we might. I think I'm taking I'm taking the risky approach of like I never got super into Diablo, but now that it's on the Switch, I might get <laughs> I super might into Diablo. Get so- <laughs> <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse. All these games coming to Switch. <laughs> um, that's cool though. The only I think Shine yeah. might have because when this news story is brought up, we were discussing it in Discord. Uh, and. Yeah. Shine said there's certain points in that game where there's a ton going on on the screen, um, and there's a ton of stuff you have to manage. So he thought yeah. playing it at least in like handheld mode might be not so good. <laughs> yeah, you definitely start to get to the point where the way they fix the problem of having multiple abilities is you would hold down the trigger button or bumper button, and then that would unlock the next ring of abilities you had right. mapped to buttons. Like left trigger, left which, trigger, and A is going to do something than just A by yeah, itself. Yeah, that kind of exactly idea. which. I guess you could still get around it that way in handheld, but I could see where maybe that would not feel the greatest, I guess. But I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they'll make it work. Um, all right, the next part of this, uh, Blizzard says that Overwatch would be feasible on the Switch, but not oh, StarCraft? Uh, StarCraft StarCraft 2. Yeah. Um, uh, I, yeah, I I, they were asked this in an article with The Verge because 64 had a port, and I guess they just kind of threw that out there, and they're just like, no, nah, not happening. Um, but I think this is the first time that Blizzard has ever actually gave any hint that Overwatch could come to the Switch. So I think that's a you know, pretty big deal, considering that uh, Paladins you know, moved, you know, know, moved, made the move to the Switch, and it seems like they're doing, from Kaboski at least, it sounds like they're doing fairly well because it sounds like he's put some money into that game too so so overwatch um, for switch confirmed you heard it here first mm-hmm. on cross of the cross play as well i'll put it to you this way i'd be surprised if it didn't and uh actually now that you mentioned cross play i'm interested to see if diablo 3 will have cross play because they didn't say anything about that but okay i think that game would work great with cross i've always heard the seasons the seasons always seem like that's something that could um the in-game content, yeah, that kind of keeps people yeah. keeps people coming back. Like when the season resets, maybe hop in at that point yeah. or something. I don't know. Yeah. Chances are, I just won't play it. I'm just. <laughs> I-, I can't wait for the uh, risk. He's like, never been to Overwatch, but I heard it's coming to Switch. So <laughs> logging in 100 hours on Overwatch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or I bought it and it's just sitting there. <laughs> it, it's one or the other, man. It's it's, it's one. Yeah, or it's the it's, other. it's either full throttle or no go. Yeah. Um, all right. How about this last news story, Doc? That's that's you. Yeah. Um. So we had talked about this for a couple weeks now. I feel like everybody knows that Elite Two, Elite Controller for Xbox version two is coming, and we have it's been the leakiest news story ever. Uh, recently, Tom Warren of uh, the, is a senior editor at The Verge said that he has been told that Project Washburn um, is a new device coming from Microsoft, price tag of one hundred fifty dollars. Sounds about right. 
Sounds about mm. right. Yeah. <laughs> it's. I mean, what, correct me if I'm wrong. One hundred fifty dollars was the first controller's price tag, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> what are the chances that the people listening right now already heard this announcement today at some point? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know what we should do? We should say something crazy that it's going to have and then just have everybody listen and be like, man, those guys are idiots. Like, Why would you say uh, that? More importantly, Washboard, Burn, who comes up with these names? Some of them are really good. Some of them are really bad. Yeah. Scorpio was cool, but like Dur- Durango, Durango for yeah. the first Xbox was like sounded like a truck of some sort. Uh, like A drink? Or, I don't know. You know. I mean, Scarlet just sounds like he's named after his daughter. Yeah, yeah, so... That, well, we didn't put this in the news story, but there's also a Project Largo, uh, which is Xbox-related, that the same guy Tom Warren tweeted about a week ago, but he didn't know what it was. Is that He just knew that it was Xbox-related. Uh, that could also be something random that we didn't see coming announced at Gamescom 2. So, um, last, uh, actually, last news story I'm going to throw in. Uh, or actually, do you guys anything else you want to add about the Elite controller as far as... It's probably just the, another know. thing I'm going to throw my money at. <laughs> Yeah, any chance that any of us don't get this eventually? Listen, day one, I'll be getting it if same yeah. if they put Xbox lab, Design Labs on it. Oh, so then it's a two hundred dollar controller. It, it hey, is. you know what? Even if it's two hundred, take my money at that point if I can customize that thing. I like... will just have to hide it from my wife. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> just go rob a bank, you know? It'd yeah. be fine. Yeah. What this shiny new thing? Shh. Did you get this duffel bag of a hundred? It's weird. <laughs> yeah. uh, last news story I want to add that I didn't uh, put on in time. I kind of forgot about. Um, you know, we were talking about before how if a game is in Games Pass, it gets a twenty uh, percent discount. Um, the base game, and that's uh, any game that's in Game Pass gets that. So recently, and I think as of today, I checked again, and it's still there. Um, Injustice Two: Gods Among Us, the fighting game, ha- has a twenty percent discount, and says get your 20% discount with Game Pass on the game right now, even though it's not technically in Game Pass. Oh. Uh, so we might get an announcement this week that that's coming to Game so Pass, which I feel like confirmed that's... confirmed first you know. here on Cross Atlantic Gaming again. <laughs> um, you can expect what Injust- Injustice 2 uh, next month yeah. in Game Pass. Yeah. Um, and if it's not there, you can tweet at Doc. <laughs> <laughs> you filthy liar. I hate you. I or join be. us in Discord where you can just hit at and Doc and bug him whenever mm, you want. Yeah. Easy. And then eventually when you give us money, we will call you out on a podcast and shit all over you. So, so. thanks a lot for nothing, Ladonian, you POS. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> worthless pleb. Uh, Par for anyways. the place. Yeah. I really feel like we're pioneering new territory here, guys. I really feel like we're on to something. We're doing well. All right. Well. So that's going to do it for the news. So next up, the segment you've all been waiting for, Chocolates Call Out challenge i'm a hot mess right now so there's going to be no messing around i'm calling out ryan h that's right ryan it's going to be you and me you choose the game. You can choose Rocket League. I've already beaten you on that, so it doesn't matter. You let me know tomorrow in Discord what you want me to beat you with. And I shouldn't have used that word. What do you want me to beat you with? That <laughs> sounds wrong. I mean, it, uh, well, I thought it was yeah. fine. These call-outs are getting worse and no, worse. No, it's good. <laughs> um, how, wh- what was, who was last week? Last week was Sweeney. Um, I'm a little bit behind with my editing. Um, Rass unfortunately picked Madden, and I didn't know it was 15 minutes a quarter or something stupid like that. <laughs> Felt like 15 minutes a quarter. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. I remember now. This is where you were playing the story mode to get ready for the match, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, trust me, and you'll know I was ready. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, so the uploads are a little bit slow, but I'll um, I'll get through that. My wife's away tomorrow, so you'll get Ras's uh, gameplay tomorrow, and then I'll upload Sweeney's the following day, and then I'll just beat Ryan the next. Any, uh that's the bottom line. Any preview to the Sweeney match you might want to tip us off to? How did it? 
You won, obviously, but... but it, uh, uh, what I, I meant don't... to say was how bad did you beat him, I guess, is what I meant to say. Look, I don't want to embarrass one of our patrons. Fair. Okay, fair. Um, fair. fair. But, you know, he, he should go home and cry to his mother. Oh! Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, I'm a big Sweeney fan. I don't know if I can just... That's 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 rough. Well, hang on. Are you sure it's not Sweeney's a big fan of you? Uh, it, it's mutual. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're lucky there's an ocean separating us, is all I can say. I think you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and if people do want to find or do want to see these uh, chocolate call out challenge videos, um, they're all on the 16 ounce gaming family YouTube channel. And there's a link for that in our show notes. Yeah. Come down. So if, if you've got any uh, comments, feedback about it, please uh, let me know um, either commenting on the video or tweet me or join discord hint, hint and let us know. For sure. It's, it's all in jest. It's all good fun. So Come be a it's part so of the fun. Seriously, a good group of guys. Easy to get along with. And, uh, yeah. Join the Discord. Just do it. Do it. Your life will be so much better. Mm, debatable. Nine Dude. out of ten doctors agree. 16 ounce Discord <laughs> is better for your health. One out of one of our Look crazy Pro- doctors. Prove me wrong. Prove me <laughs> wrong that that's not a fact. Yeah. One out of one pharmacist from Kentucky. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Well... We made it all the way through episode 14 of Cross Atlantic Gaming. I almost made it a full episode as well. And, and <laughs> you were there for a majority of it. We, we can't ask for freaked, more at this point. I freaked out a little bit. I didn't know if Chocolate was uh, trolling you when you were getting re- You were prepping the Chocolate call-out challenge, and he muted himself right at that point. I'm like, oh, this could go bad. <laughs> no, I, I, I saw that because I wasn't on the show notes. I was on the actual website, and I saw him mute it, and I was like, uh... God damn that baby waking again. <laughs> and there he goes. <laughs> we will move the uh. segment. <laughs> um all right. So let's plug this show up. Did we do the uh phrase as well? Yeah, I took care of it. Don't you worry. Oh good. <laughs> I'm all glad you it. did. <laughs> it was a piece of cake. Good I don't know why you get so worried about it every week. I think it's a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. It's just when Doc drops the whole phrase in a in a podcast, it's kind of <laughs> yeah. So the last three episodes, I, uh... or the last three words were <laughs> this, yeah. this, and this. What? Uh, what? Yeah, you know exactly what you're doing. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you would like to support the show financially, if you'd like to have us talk shit <laughs> about you on the podcast. <laughs> That's just saying for what if it is. If you would yeah. like to be called out by chocolate, I'm not saying that you need to actually be a patron <laughs> to oh, get yeah, called no, out no. by chocolate. That's not what I meant at all. But those are all things included in the so Patreon. So far, that's, that's what it seems like. Um, you can head on over to patreon.com slash CAG podcast if you'd like to support the show. Um, eventually, we would like to be able to give away um, a game a month, a full price AAA awesome game. Of your choosing. Of your, uh, maybe we should choose the games. Uh, maybe that'll entice some people. Yeah, no. no? We'll let you choose the game. <laughs> okay, uh. I, th- I think that's fair. Um, but yeah, so there's that. If you want to follow us on social media, we're on Twitter and Instagram at CAG Podcast. Right? Yeah, at CAG Podcast, yes. sorry. Oh, I was yeah. going to say dot .com at the end of it. That's not going to help you find anything. Um <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to email us, you could reach us at cagpodcast at gmail.com. Um, we're also a part of the 16 Ounce Gaming Family um, Discord, which we've been promoting. And we'll never stop promoting because it's the best place to be. Um, a link for that is in the show notes. Come hang out with us day in, day out. I sit at a desk all day in Discord uh, just typing. So It's amazing how he gets paid for that Shh. as well. They also have a YouTube and Facebook <laughs> Links for those are in the show notes as well. That's where you can find the Chocolate Callout Challenge stuff. That's where you can find a bunch of stuff from the stream team members. Um, Shine. That's where you can see Shine do Hitman. There yes. you go. Is Ross also doing that? Um, I haven't seen anything. Okay, but... well, he also does his... There, He's doing a playthrough of Master Chief Collection, I think, right now. Yes, yeah. Um, so, I mean, there's a bunch of good content there made by good people. Um, and you can find links for all of that. One more time. Where, guys? Discord. D- uh, 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 Discord. 
I was gonna say the show notes below, but um, yeah, in Discord. Oh, uh, <laughs> and the link for that in the is show in notes. The show notes. Below. Um, I think I just spaced out. For no, a second. you're good. I I shouldn't be throwing questions at you in the middle of the plugs. Um, I just have a seat. All right, is there? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a stroke? Does it smell like toast? Uh, it's, I think I smell some toast. Yeah. Oh, uh, what kind of toast? <laughs> uh oh. All right, uh, yeah. leave it alone. Um, anything else you guys like to plug before we get on out of here? I was going to say, we did get a question oh, emailed in. Totally. We, oh, yeah. You the one that I haven't that. thought about anymore else either. <laughs> no, let's do it. There we go. There's dropping one. Right. So, um, <laughs> Professor Pluto, who recently joined Discord. Do you like how yeah, I did I that? Yeah, I heard that. You're good. Um, so, he was wondering. <laughs> he's got a two-part question. Um, we might just do the first part because the other one seems quite long. Um, but a favorite achievement, uh, whether you earned it or not. So, what is your favorite achievement? Whether you've earned it or not. And uh, risky. I love your voice. Tell uh, me. The easiest one for me, at least, I haven't achieved it, but I've spent way too much. Back when I used to actually do like some achievement hunting, or like, if you're only like a couple achievements short, you might try to just knock out those last couple things. Um, I believe it was Modern Warfare, or Modern Warfare 2, and you probably know exactly what I'm about to say, but the Mile High Club. Oh, yeah. Um, at the yep. very end of the game, I think you had 30 seconds to clear a whole plane on veteran um my younger brother got it and i was always the sad brother that (laughs) that couldn't achieve it and i didn't want to be like hey i'll give you 10 bucks if you can uh knock out that achievement for me quick so i gave him five i gave him five (laughs) so i compromised so check out that thousand gamer (laughs) score on a call of duty um that one for me i feel like is just that and then the other one that comes to mind is if you could play a, was it a Dragon Force song on Guitar Hero through the fire and the flames? I think you had to play that on expert oh, yeah. and like watching kids do that on YouTube, they'd like come out with like bloody fingers and you'd be like, how Ridiculous. did you just do that? Um, yeah, I don't spend a lot of time with achievements though. Um, those are just the two that come to mind for me. Neither of which I have or have come close to. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I guess for me, I'm a big fan of um, ones that uh, – so they've done this in some Far Cry games, and most recently uh, We Happy Few uh, achievements that when the game starts out, you're given a very clear choice at the beginning to do one of two things, and you know that one of the choices will end the game right then and there because theoretically that's how it could go. And We Happy Few, at the very beginning, you start to have flashbacks of your brother, which ended poorly – and right beside you, you have these joy uh, pills to take. If you take the pills right then and there, the game ends. You're happy, you're blissful, and nothing bad ever happens, and the credits roll, and uh, you get a rare achievement. I I have one just like that, and this is actually a really good one. This one was from, did you guys play Prey? Yes. Okay, so there's an achievement. I had to look up what it was actually called. Um, It's called No Show, but when uh, the helicopter comes to pick you up for your first day of work, if you jump into the helicopter blades <laughs> oh, and no. die, you get 10 gamer score for not <laughs> making it to work. And the achievement is called No Show. <laughs> not making it to work. So that's uh, that one's pretty good. Uh, another good one is the Pagan Men one on Far Cry 4. He's like, you wait right there. I'll be back. You know, obviously the game is indicating you need to go get the hell out of here. You can but literally if you wait there, there, he eventually comes back. Yep. Yeah. Isn't that how you can beat <laughs> the game in like seven roll. minutes or something? Yep. That's the. And I think, didn't Far Cry 5 recently have the same thing where you could just not arrest the guy and walk out and that was that? Yep. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's like a Far Cry thing yeah, for you, sure at this you'll point. You'll see that in uh, Far Cry 6 somehow. Yeah. Um, last achievement I want to throw out because I, I, I'm contractually obligated to talk about it because it's just so sea great. Thieves. Uh, no, actually. Oh. No, see if these achievements kind of suck. I'm going to be the first to Stealing say Stealing somebody else's treasure chest and then turning it in, that was one that sticks in my head. No, that's a pretty yeah. good one. Yeah, they do got some... I, the one that the fan made when they made to where if you kill a shark with an exploding barrel that you shoot with a gun is the uh, smile, you son of a bitch. I like that one from Jaws. Uh, oh, that's oh. funny. That was a cool one that fans made, yeah. Uh, but the other one was um, near Automata, and I think you know where I'm going with this, Risky. <laughs> That's the one I was gonna say. Yeah. Oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> no, but go for it, go for it, because I couldn't remember what well, it was from. Well, actually, actually, you you take it, you take it, chocolate. I'll let you explain it. Well, it's only from what I've heard. I, I haven't touched it, but isn't it looking or oh, upskirting? 
I was um, gonna I was gonna kind of hint around it, but never mind. <laughs> and I go straight. I think you, we go straight for it and go right uh, in, right? Just yeah, just kind of be a perv and look up a few skirts and um there's going to be no shout out to a certain member of the community who's going to... <laughs> oh no what's shout- the best oh. oh whoops the best part about that was i rarely comment on achievements on my uh, community feed but i had to on that one and uh, i was just like well i appreciate you listening to the podcast scott <laughs> But also, I think Toast was saying that it's only you only have to do it ten you times, like and he's done it a hundred <laughs> and something or something. Whoa, <laughs> hey yo! Yeah, so uh, there you go, bud. And uh, Patreon dot com. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm We're joking. contractually obligated to, to completely trash anybody that's yeah, you know, yeah. Helping us but out, yeah, so. that's. Um, that is what I think my favourite one. And there's another one. I can't remember the game, but you could get a thousand gamer score within about seven seconds of just pressing one Naruto? button. Naruto? Oh, wow. N- is it Naruto? No, there was another was one it? as well. It was oh, It was early on. It was 360 oh, okay. days. And if you had that on your gamer score, it was looked. It was Poor frowned Leibon. upon. Yeah, oh. completely. I can't think what it was called, but it was literally... Bash the button seven times within the opening title scene, and that was it. You got a thousand G's for it, and that is one of my first thousand games <laughs> score. <laughs> and I'm proud of it. I don't you, care. You just reminded me of one that has to do with mutton, or button mashing. Um, on Doom Three on 360, uh, when you uh, get down to the Mars facility, you are in the mess room, and there's a old school uh, arcade cabinet um, that you can walk up to and play a mini game, and the entire mini game is just you in old Doom School fashion with your fist punching a turkey over and over. And if you punch the turkey one thousand times and get a score of one thousand, you get an achievement for that. Oh wow! Yeah, nice. and I actually sat through and did that once because I'm oh just my like, God. I'm a glutton for punishment. I'm like, I gotta have this achievement. So, How long yeah. did that take you? It took a while. It oh, took a while because it was not a fast animation on the uh, little mini game. Um, Ouch! That one and the last one I can think of that I thought was this one's more of I thought a well thought out kind of a cool of achievement when back in the day when uh, devs still take the time to make good ones, but I feel like this is when they were really trying to make some interesting ones. But um, Dead Rising, um, if you killed the entire population of the town of zombies you unlocked achievement i think it was like sixty thousand something it was the town of willamette the entire population so everybody went down to the underground and just drove their cars exactly. back and forth yes. through the maintenance tunnel yes. just murdering yes. zombies yeah if you if you google it that was by far the easiest way to do it and that yep that's what most people did so. i feel like all the dead rising achievements were kill 1162 or like sixty six thousand six hundred. they had quite a few achievements where you had to destroy this massive amount of zombies yeah um yeah. i love those games yeah it's uh it's pretty neat though yeah they're they definitely i love it anytime uh developers get really crafty with uh you know a, achievements naming or what you got to do and stuff like that yeah. it's good now guys it's almost midnight all right oh it's past midnight let's yeah. real, oh real quick professor pluto great name by the way great name love that name yeah it's all right <laughs> oh did he already give us money is that why we gotta not be nice no 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 <laughs> i just feel it's gonna be it's no risky the i was kid. just being an ass <laughs> but yeah it's no risky the kid speaking of risky the kid if you want to find me anywhere and everywhere you can find me at risky the kid boom chocolate how about you bam nice segue um i'm chocolate about 18 search i'm there and doc uh, Doc H one X one everywhere because I've made a personal crusade to lock up every account everywhere with that. I name, will so. say one caveat to my name is that on Xbox there are spaces between Risky the and Kid. <laughs> um, I went to go try to switch it over for the the nice nine ninety nine price tag uh, to Risky the Kid with no spaces, and somebody had taken it. How is that a thing? What a jerk! God, just the worst kind of people. So wouldn't it have been cheaper to change the others? All right, we're not going to go there. Thanks, everybody, for tuning <laughs> into this week's episode of Cross Atlantic Gaming. We'll catch you guys next week for an all-new episode. Goodbye. Take care. Love you, Toast. Bye. <laughs> that was so much better. I didn't, say, I didn't say something bad about Toast this time. I feel like I was, uh, in, you know, 
improvement on so my So how part. do you feel about Toast? Oh, I hate him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that goddamn motherfucker. <laughs>